Well, welcome everyone to our 12 p.m. session on Tuesday. And we're gonna hear from Simon Bradley, um, who is the founder of Simon Bradley Marketing, New York City-based consultancy. He's gonna cover some key insights around consumer behavior, the response of marketers and the impact on marketing channels in this time. Um, so the session is 25 minutes long. We're gonna start out with Simon's talk. We're gonna have a poll for you guys, an interactive part about 10 minutes in. Um, and then we will end in a Q&A session, depending on how much time is left, but feel free to pose a question at any time with the little Q&A button down below. I will leave it to Simon to take it away. Okay, uh, well, hi, I'm gonna uh, share my uh, screen to start with. And uh, I wanna start by saying hi to everybody. Welcome to this um, presentation. And I hope you find this useful. This is a pretty quick, summary of where things are right now. What we're gonna to do today is look at some uh, insights around what's been going on in consumer space, in the marketing space around uh, coronavirus, and then also uh, look at some best practices uh, as well. Uh, so without any further ado, um, we, will, we will get started. Um, so quick bit about me, uh, just so you have a bit of background. So uh, I come from uh, many kind of senior roles running marketing teams for the likes of Virgin Atlantic uh, and the Madison Square Garden Company. I'm now a consultant and I provide uh, marketing training programs for a wide variety of clients uh, around the world. Here's a few of those. Um, so that's a bit uh, about me. So we're gonna dive uh, straight into uh, looking at some uh, key insights and trends. And you know, one thing I would say about this uh, crisis is that you know, we are facing, you know, as, as everybody is saying, you know, an unprecedented uh, situation. And it's so important that we keep our finger on the pulse because I've been doing this now, I've been tracking this for almost three weeks and constantly changing out the data points uh, because things are moving so quickly. So my kind of number one piece of advice to everybody on this uh, session today is to keep up with what's going on and to keep tracking those changes because uh, in the marketing world, it's a little unpredictable. And um, you can see just from some of the data here uh, how things are shifting. So uh, let's just start quickly by reviewing where we're at in terms of consumer confidence. And it's clear that consumer confidence is down um, we know that uh, it's at a, a two-year low uh, morning consult um, gave us the, that stat uh, last week. Um, we're seeing consumers cutting back on spending. The last data point I saw showed about 34% of consumers are uh, cutting back on, on spending. And there's a worry across all generations. But interestingly, you know, millennials are the ones who are changing their shopping and commercial behavior uh, the most. For those of you who work in the B2B space, well, I'm sure you're seeing some pretty um, big impacts, particularly uh, if you're working with small businesses. Um, but 69% uh, of North American marketers, when they were surveyed by uh, e-consultancy uh, just over a week ago, um, said that their customers are um, delaying their spending decisions. So that's having a big impact on the overall picture of um, uh, uh, consumer confidence. So let's dig into that uh, now and look at it a little bit more closely. Um, and this is some uh, interesting data uh, that I picked up uh, last, uh, the end of last week uh, from McKinsey and Statista, um, which takes the period around the middle of March um, and, and looks at uh, expected changes at that point in um, uh, consumer spending. So you can see you know, clear growth in some areas, uh, and then, um, you know, severe impacts, particularly if you look at things like um, outdoor entertainment um, having, having a real impact there. And um, this is an important point about this coronavirus crisis that, um, you know, there are clearly a lot of negative impacts happening. But as marketers, we should also be looking out for where the opportunities are, right? And there are definitely opportunities appear and we're going to explore some of those a little later on some of them are very obvious like you know home food delivery um, some less so but tracking those opportunities and then reacting with you know uh, very very kind of focused uh, performance marketing is a super important uh, thing to be doing right now so you can see there's some there's some definite opportunity just in in that chart uh, there and then if we we look at uh, how 
online traffic is shifting, uh, again, we start to see more opportunity emerging as well. And again, some areas have been severely impacted, but there are, there's been an enormous growth uh, in um, online, this is, this is globally, uh, online uh, purchasing uh, through uh, food and groceries, uh, a huge growth in co uh, consumption of online media, uh, online communications, uh, tech and retail uh, as well. So uh, again, seeing there some shifts that have gone on and some opportunities that are emerging uh, from that data. It's also useful just to look a little bit further forward. This is data from Ipsos. Um, and what we can do here is we can, we can look at you know, a situation that's, hap that's un unraveled in, say, China uh, and in Italy as well, both of which are ahead of the US uh, right now. So you can see in China in particular, um, you know, 50% of the population are using e-commerce to purchase products um, more than they would normally do. Uh, that number in Italy is 31%. Uh, uh, and so you can see a picture of where the U.S. is going to go. You can see when that data point uh, was taken, it, U.S. was just 23%. But you can see how that's going to grow. So these trends around e-commerce, uh, use of online media, uh, use of online entertainment, uh, food delivery, all, all of that, uh, online retail, all of that that we've seen is going to absolutely continue and accelerate and probably stay with us after this crisis, and that's a really important thing to, to bear in mind. Likewise, uh, this is again looking at China and Italy uh, for food or groceries delivered online, and you can see the growth, the jump that happened in Italy and the growth that happened uh, in China as well. So that's something that we could expect to see uh, coming our way uh, as well. Okay, so uh, I want to try and make this, I know there's a lot of people on this call and um, we'll, we'll definitely be have opportunities for Q&A uh, a little later, uh, but I wanted to get a, uh, an idea from you about how you're responding and how your brand has responded to the coronavirus outbreak. So Catherine, could we put up the, the poll um, and we're going to poll you now, I think. Okay. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to continue just in the interest of time because I don't want to uh to spend too long at this point. It's handy that actually I did this poll with another audience um a couple of days ago. So I've been doing a lot of these webinars and uh talking to a lot of different marketers and so this is what uh 480 marketers said about a week ago in terms of how their brand had responded to the coronavirus outbreak and you can see you know um, a strong um, uh, number of brands have changed the tone of their marketing um, large number have also created content uh, specific to coronavirus uh, increasing social listening is something that's you know we've seen a real growth in and um, that's a, such an important thing we'll talk about that later when we look at some best practices but that's such an important thing uh, to be doing right now, as is increasing customer service resources. So that's that's what you know marketers were were doing uh, a week ago, and and of course reducing advertising spend, and we're seeing the impact of that uh, across uh, different channels. Um, but uh, hopefully we can get that poll working, or we can put it around afterwards. But it'd be interesting to see what everybody on this uh, workshop is, is is thinking. Okay, so uh, let's dig into how marketers and brands are responding a little bit more. We're going to look at a couple of examples later, uh, but these are a few extra data points that have come from advertiser perceptions, which was a survey done last week, um, and also um, uh, e-consultancy uh, as well. So 34% have cancelled campaigns outright uh, pre-launch, 57%. Um, are delaying product and service launches. They're putting them under review. 63% um, of marketers surveyed um, are putting their budget commitments under review or delaying those as well. And I'm sure many people on this call are seeing that um, as well. Let's look as well at some um, industry uh, impacts across channels. Uh, now, the first one will be obvious to everybody. There's been an enormous surge in cancellations 
um, just in February alone of uh, significant uh, events. And um, the analysts, Mossad, uh, Nathanson, they predict a potential loss of nearly $26 billion in US ad spend uh, this year. And in fact, I saw a figure this morning for the UK that forecasted that 50% uh, of the advertising will be 50% down uh, in April um, from, uh, from the UK. Uh, so, you know, seeing widespread impact. But where is that impact happening? And where is the growth happening as well in, um, or the shift at least, in marketing spend? So this is some data from the Myers report who uh, monitor and forecast um, investment in marketing and advertising in the US. And you can see here uh, some really clear shifts happening. So this is a reforecast um, of what they would, what they're expecting to see post coronavirus uh, versus their original forecast. So you can see obviously experiential and events, uh, direct mail and email marketing, um, cinema, mobile, all of those are significantly down in forecast against the original. Whereas we're actually seeing uh, growth in areas like network TV, social media, obviously, um, newspaper, content, um, digital content, obviously, and uh, PR as well. So um, quite a shift happening there in terms of media. And you know we're seeing brands shift their spend into areas to react to how consumers are behaving. So I want to move on now. Um, I hope that those insights are useful. What I'd like to do now is move on and um, talk a little bit about some best practices uh, that I've seen emerging from this. And these are best practices that, that I've tried to, uh, oh, the poll has appeared, I think. Yeah, I think I got it. Great. I, I got it to well, work Before now, we move on then, let's do the poll, shall we? All right, they look pretty static now. I'll end the poll, is that okay, Simon? Yeah, let's do that. All right, and I'll share the results. Brilliant, thanks Catherine, that's great. So um, let's have a look at what, what you guys are saying. So um, pretty similar to our last one in the uh, number of people who are changing the tone of marketing communications, creating content specific to coronavirus. Um, and Fewer number of people saying that they're increasing social listening um, efforts. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in just a moment uh, and the importance of that. And 11%, for, four out of the, the total number of people who responded, are reducing advertising spend. So um, interesting stuff. So thank you for that, because I'm going to take that one away. Um, and I'm now going to um, move on. Um, Okay, I've got a I've got a question here. I'm I'm hoping that this is going to Stephanie. Your question is, how can you positively urge your own brand and your clients to move quickly? I'm so frustrated with the slowness to respond. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this in a minute, and I hope I'll be able to give you a bit of ammo to help with that. I mean, I think you know the thing I find the most per persuasive every time is the data, and I think if you're able to show what other brands are doing, what uh, consumers are doing, um, that might that might kind of you know put a fire under under your partners or your brand because one of the things that's super important at a time like this is agility, right? And um, I'm going to be talking about that right now. So what I've done is I put together some best practices. Because this is seven steps to really try and help you think about how you can carry on marketing during the coronavirus period, but do it in a way that is going to be appropriate for the moment and deliver growth um, in the long term uh, as well. So our first best practice is uh, to think customer first. And this is, uh, you know, super, this is where social listening becomes important because sentiment is changing rapidly and our consumers are adapting really, really quickly. If you just look online at the way people are so inventive at coming up with ways of being at home or entertaining themselves, you know, our consumers are moving fast. So this is a time when uh, it's absolutely vital that we listen, we respond, and we listen again, and we keep listening to ensure that we are in tune with what our customers are doing and saying. 
Um, so gathering feedback from as many sources as possible, social listening, your, your frontline retail, your contact centers, to make sure that you are uh, in tune with what's going on and then being empathetic and providing reassurance um, about uh, the way in which you communicate and ensuring that all of your channels are in sync of, uh, with that. So putting the customer at the center. Let's just look at a bit of data here. Um, this is from, um, this is data about what our customers think about marketing right now. So how are they, how are they perceiving the efforts that are being made? How are they perceiving, um, you know, how brands are responding? And the interesting thing is only 8% of consumers think that brands should stop advertising, right? So that's a big message is you've got to stay relevant and you've got to stay in there and you've got to stay in the conversation. And even your consumers don't want you to pull away from uh, having that conversation and, and advertising. Uh, so this is uh, global consumers, uh, but it's all about the way in which you do it and being in tune with those sentiments, right? So 78% believe brands should help with daily life, right? 75% uh, say brands should inform people about what they're doing. 74% say companies should be not exploiting the situation. So you shouldn't be appearing to be opportunistic uh, right now. 41% uh, think brands should avoid humorous tones. So, you know, that's that's 59% um, who think it's okay. The question there is what's appropriate for your brand and what should you be doing there? And only 30% feel like it's, a, it's the right time for discounts and promotions, right? And the sentiment behind that is that actually, you know, brands, uh, that consumers are understanding that many of their favorite brands are going through a tough time. So it's not necessary all the time to provide discounts and promotions. They're willing to buy in certain segments are definitely showing that. So let's be in tune with what is being said and what is being done uh, by our consumers. And this is a good example uh, from China. Um, this is Starbucks who got out early. They were one of the first Western brands to really get ahead of the whole hygiene uh, and safety issue in China uh, and did very well from that uh, as a result. My second um, best practice is to dial up customer service touch points. So um, how you help your customers now is going to have the longest lasting impact. And that's a super important thing to, to remember that, you know, consumers have long memories and uh, those who fail to do that and don't provide great services at such a critical time, they're going to remember that. And those who do at this moment of truth, they're also going to remember that as well. So how can you ramp up your resources and bring your A game to your customer service um, touch points? You know, we talk in marketing, we talk a lot about customer experience being the new marketing and 360 marketing and the importance of all of our touch points. Well, this touch point is the one that is absolutely critical for this crisis that we're in. And so if you haven't put resources into that, I would definitely think um, about doing that and doing it in a proactive way and a non-promotional way as well. Uh, this is a company I'm very fond of. I used to uh, run the marketing for Virgin Atlantic here in the US. And I think Virgin have done a great job with many other airlines, like Delta and JetBlue, uh, getting out in front of a crisis that has decimated their industry. But they've been uh, proactive, they've been calm, uh, and they've been highly, highly service focused. And behind the scenes, they've been shifting resources into those service uh, functions. Of course, marketing has to continue, right? And so it's a question of thinking about how do we now adapt our performance marketing? There was a survey by Advertiser Perceptions towards the end of last week that said that 65% of marketers are predicting that they're gonna be shifting their budgets into performance-driven marketing, i.e. marketing which is designed to drive uh, sales. So it, to do that, um, Really think about how you can position your products and services to add value, solve problems. Think about dividing your response efforts into defense and offense, right? So what have you got to do to circle the wagons and protect what you've got? What, what can, and what can you do from an offense perspective to go out and try and win new business? Where are there opportunities? Where are there niches um, that you can find? So the defense is about focusing on your most loyal customers. 
uh, the offense is about looking at those sales channels and adapting them to an online focus and then using the data-driven marketing that you have to target audiences that are willing to buy. We've seen some good examples of that from DoorDash, who launched a campaign last week. Um, and also, this is a great example on the B2B side from uh, Satisfy Labs, who have produced a uh, COVID-19 chat assistant chatbot, and they're actually going out prospecting and trying to win uh, new markets. It's also a really important time to think about, from your brand's perspective, what is it that is core to your expertise and what makes you an authority, and then put that to work. Um, so you can do that by providing insights and data and trends and offering credible advice and, and tips as well. So the likes of KPMG have been working hard on that, um, providing, you know, delivering their expertise in a different way and building their brand at the same time. This is a critical point um, that for, for all brands, it, you know, we should always be living our purpose, but at a time like this, when our consumers need us, we should be thinking about how we can live our purpose in a way that can really uh, be appropriate to the moment and can support customers, supply chains, partners, and actually you know, do something positive. Uh, we saw Jameson last week do some really interesting work. Uh, sorry, it was during St. Patrick's week where they, um, they leaned into the idea of supporting the United States Bartenders Guild and donated to them rather than advertise uh, on St. Patrick's Day. So that's them really demonstrating what their purpose, their brand purpose uh, is about. And then, look, I know everyone's really busy at the moment, but we're going to be in this situation for a while. And as marketers, there's an opportunity for us to look at what we can do with any spare capacity that we have and a great time to do some much needed housekeeping. These are all things that you could be doing if you have downtime that need doing have been put on the back burner. And you can even look at your, um, your training needs as well and take advantage of this opportunity to upskill. And then during this time, please, please remember it's critical to plan for the rebound, okay? This situation is gonna rebound and it's gonna rebound quickly and probably faster than you would expect. And we're certainly seeing evidence of that in China. Some sectors will come back very, very, very quickly. So it's important that we're ready, right? And we're gonna have pent up demand from customers. We're gonna to need to be ready to react. Um, and so by looking at what's, what we think is gonna happen, what are those emerging trends likely to be, we can scenario plan and we can develop campaigns and have those ready to go um, when the situation improves. I wanna finish with a couple of quick things. I can see that time's getting on, um, but very quickly, just a, just a few missteps. These are some things that I've seen out there to avoid. I think most brands now are beginning to get the hang of this, um, this technique of marketing during the crisis.